Hey Frag fam, Corbin here again from Northwest Scent. Well, it's Monday, which means it is time for my weekly fragrance haul. Last week, you guys probably noticed that I did not post a video for the weekly fragrance haul, and that's just because I didn't get enough fragrances for that previous week to actually warrant making that video. However, combining those fragrances along with all the fragrances I picked up this week, we have plenty for this video. I actually have 12 fragrances that we're gonna be talking about. We're not gonna be going super in depth, of course, but just more showing you and maybe giving you a brief description on the fragrances. So if you're interested in hearing about the 12 fragrances that I've recently acquired, please stick around. But first, let's roll that intro. Welcome back. So like I said, 12 fragrances that I've acquired in the last couple of weeks. We have some cheapies as well as some higher end niche. Some of these were blind buys, others I did previously test and decided I wanted to get a full bottle. So we got a lot of different stuff going on here. So with all that out of the way, we're gonna jump straight into the first fragrance I picked up. And starting us off with the first fragrance that I got, it's this one right here. It's from Atelier de Sors. This is Iris Fav. And I, like, I can't remember the exact day I honestly got this as well as some of these other ones. I do apologize for that. But like I said, I got this one just a little under two weeks ago. So this is one that I've been able to get a little bit more familiar with. I have worn it, really solid fragrance. This is kind of a unique take on an iris fragrance. Generally, when you think of stuff that has iris in it, it's usually fresher, you know, the Prada Loam line, for example, or some of the Dior Ohms, even though the Dior Ohms are kind of on that sweet side, with like the Parfum and the Intense one out of the way, they are a little bit fresh as well. This is a heavy resinous iris, so you do get a dominant iris note here. There's cinnamon, there's bergamot in the top, but you also get these heavy resins. There's myrrh and then labdanum in here, and you get some patchouli as well. So this is honestly probably the heaviest iris fragrance that I've ever smelled. Heavy, resinous, sweet, a little creamy. The iris here, it's more on that kind of waxy side, kind of similar to what you see in the Dior Ohms, but it's not like a carbon copy of that. You know, it's definitely kind of separating itself here, doing its own thing. It smells extremely high quality. You know, this is a higher end niche fragrance. You can see it's really tacky. They have all these gold flakes in here, which I don't really like that. And I'm honestly kind of confused. I feel like they could get sucked up into the atomizer and then clog it. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm not thinking about that correctly, but that's just what I think of when I see gold flakes in the bottles like this. But apparently it works. You know, this thing sprays totally fine. Nonetheless, it smells amazing. This is a really solid iris fragrance. I love iris, so I was happy to get this one. This is definitely gonna be making lists in the fall and winter, or maybe some other kind of list that I do during the summer when we focus on a like specific topic. So again, my first pickup, that was Atelier de Sors, Iris Fav. Okay, this video is gonna go on for way too long if I get too in depth, so I'm gonna try and keep it a little bit more brief, but my following pickup was this one right here. This one is from Imaginary Authors and it's called Saint Julep. And this is a fragrance that I had sampled previously, really liked it, went ahead and gotten a full bottle. You can see the notes, just like all of the Imaginary Authors fragrances are here on the back. There is Sweet Mint, Tangerine, Southern Magnolia, Bourbon, Grisalva, Sugar Cube, and Crushed Ice. And this is a nice warm weather, almost kind of gives you this tropical feel kind of fragrance, but it almost smells like a Coke and whiskey. It has this booziness because there is that bourbon in here. It gives you kind of this sweet, almost fizzy quality coming from that tangerine, that mint, and then there was one other note in here that kind of gave me that vibe, the uh, the sugar cubes or whatever they're using to kind of create that effect. And then that icy effect or the, the crushed ice, I should say, you know, it just is this, like I said, it's this kind of tropical smelling whiskey and Coke kind of smelling fragrance. Really nice, unique, I love it. Doesn't have the best longevity at all, but the smell is really solid. So again, my next pickup of the week was this one right here, Imaginary Authors Saint Julep. And then I actually got this next fragrance on the same day. I went ahead and bought the Imaginary Authors in person at a local shop. I found this next one at a rack store. This one is from Hugo Boss and this is Hugo Boss Iced. And this is the first fragrance from this line. I think it's the Hugo Boss Man line or something like that. I've heard good things about this one and this was definitely a blind buy. You know, it is a cheapie. So even if I ended up not liking it, didn't really feel that bad, but I do actually enjoy this quite a bit. I actually did spray it on my hand 
and this is a nice citrusy and minty fragrance and i think the mint here is done correctly there's sometimes in fragrance where they the mint is like too sweet and toothpastey you know it's really synthetic and heavy it has like that like i said that toothpaste kind of smell or like that chewing gum smell here it is a synthetic mint but it's kind of done right where it is icy and a little bit minty smelling but it's not heavy sweet and like ultra synthetic smelling it does kind of have a little bit of this kind of believable smell to it really nice blending with these citruses and there's like a musky kind of undertone as well i really like this a lot it's just a simple very refreshing warm weather fragrance honestly great for the super high heat so this is definitely going to be a good dumb reach fragrance for the summer so again my next pickup was hugo boss iced so moving right along to the next fragrance this is one that was a blind buy never smelled anything from this line or even the original version of this fragrance this one is from Yves Saint Laurent, and this is M7 Oud Absolu. And damn, this was such a good blind buy. This is honestly, I can confidently say this right now, this is one of my best pickups of 2021 so far. This thing smells absolutely amazing. I've already worn it a couple of times. I definitely wanna do a full dedicated review to this fragrance. Super wearable oud, that's the best way I can say it. There's definitely an oud here. It's not like a mistakeable woody note, for example. It definitely is oudy, but it is so wearable at the same time. The mandarin orange in here and then the labdanum even this myrrh note, they really take this oud into a very wearable territory. I would say borderline niche quality smell as far as just like the sophistication here. There's nothing basic about this. So classy, elegant, but easy to wear at the same time. I absolutely love, love, love this fragrance. So definitely expect a in-depth review dedicated to this fragrance coming up soon. So again, that was Yves Saint Laurent's M7 Oud Absolu. Okay, so for my next pickups, I got five fragrances all basically in the same day. I was rack store hunting, going around to Ross, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, etc. And like I said, I picked up five fragrances. I did actually do a first impressions on these fragrances in a video recently. So if you missed that, I'll link that above with an iCard if I remember. But we're gonna go through these pretty quickly and I'm just gonna include them all in the same clip. So in no particular order, I picked up Mont Blanc Individuel, which is a nice, Kind of creamy spicy fresh sandalwood fragrance uh, creed's original santal is based on this one and there are similarities but they're not the exact same as well i think creed's is a little bit richer has more depth to it and a little bit spicier this one is more of like a fresher clean clothes like clean laundry kind of fragrance with a little bit of the spe uh, sweetness and spiciness so still fantastic fragrance like i said if you weren't aware this is discontinued check your local rack stores you can find these out there pretty easily i found one and definitely a worthy fragrance for around that 20 30 dollar range so that was mont blanc individual next was nautica voyage sport which is literally just a you know icy kind of fresh sporty version of the original voyage you know this still has the green apple this the leafy notes this one has some sea notes in it however and it's a little bit sweeter and just fresher at the same time i definitely prefer this flanker i think i said in the first impressions video that i made that i prefer this to the original voyage absolutely i think this is probably my second favorite voyage flanker at the moment just edged out by n83 so a fantastic warm weather cheapie i'm going to be looking forward to wearing that one and then again same haul was this one right here got this one at tj maxx i believe or actually no, i got this one at ross so this is abercrombie and fitch first instinct blue which in summary this just smells like invictus aqua just maybe changed up a little bit but it's basically invictus aqua good quality though it's not like a more synthetic version of that fragrance this is higher quality than mont blanc legend spirit which I do not enjoy that fragrance that much. I actually thought this one was pretty solid though. For 20 bucks for 100 mil, I thought that was a great pickup. And then another one that I got obviously in that same day was this one right here, Banana Republic Pure White, which is just kind of another fresh flanker from this Icon line. They seem to have a lot of fresh fragrances in that line for some reason. This one is citrusy, green, has a little bit of kind of a spiciness to it and kind of this herbal undertone too. I really like this one. Based on the five from this particular line that I have, this is one of my favorites. Really solid fresh fragrance. And the last one, again, in that same day, was this one right here. This is Tommy Bahama Set Sail St. Bart's. From what I remember from the note breakdown, this one has lime, tequila, agave, sea salt, sea notes. There was vanilla in here, some other notes as well. Basically just smells like a margarita in a bottle. 
pretty high quality smelling for a $20 rack store fragrance. You know, it is an eau de cologne, so it isn't very dense as far as the concentration of the fragrance oils, but the quality of the smell itself, once it has settled down, is really, really nice. So I'm really glad I have this one, a nice kind of tropical vacation beachy fragrance. So again, that was Tommy Bahama, Set Sail, St. Bart's. Okay, so moving along, I think we're at fragrance number nine now, and I got this one in on Friday. So this is an awesome vanilla heavy fragrance. Really glad I got it because this was recently discontinued. However, it is still going for a pretty affordable price, sub $40, uh, well, generally sub $50, but if you're looking in the right places, sub $40. So this one is from Mercedes-Benz, and this is Mercedes-Benz Club Black with that kind of cool amber colored juice. And like I said, this is a vanilla fragrance with some other supportive notes. There's bergamot in here. I think there was some patchouli if I remember. Now this smells really good for the price. Not only that, this has a strong resemblance to another really popular fragrance that has been discontinued. So I am gonna be making probably an in-depth comparison video between that discontinued fragrance and this one. Like I said, yes, this is discontinued, but you can still find it for a good price and it's pretty readily available. You don't have to search high and low for this one. So for the time being, this is a good alternative to that other discontinued fragrance. So again, that was Mercedes-Benz Club Black. So we're on to the last two fragrances that I acquired and I also got these in it on Friday. I actually still have them wrapped here in cellophane, haven't opened them up yet. The first one is right here, it's from BDK Parfums. This is Tabac Rose. And like I said, it's still wrapped up, so obviously I can't smell it, but this one and the next fragrance I did sample beforehand and that's why I bought them. So this is an awesome, awesome fragrance. I was actually completely blown away when I smelled this one as well as that other fragrance, amazing. You can buy these for, if you're looking in the right place, about $160, um, which is definitely less than retail. I think the retail for these is somewhere in the mid 200s. But for that like mid $100 range, this is an amazing pickup. The quality here is insanely good. I mean, these are niche fragrances, but these are up there competing with some other much more expensive niche fragrances as far as quality. And the name Tabac Rose, you know, you would think that this focuses on tobacco and rose. I honestly get more plum than rose. There is a prominent tobacco here as well. A nice cherry sweet pipe tobacco. There is rose as well, but it's definitely in the background, not the forefront. And then there's some other spices and there's a little bit of chocolate supporting this fragrance as well. So this is an amazing pickup. Like I said, I've only tried the sample. I need to open up this bottle and give it a smell and you just kind of get that full experience. But from what I remember when I tried it, this thing smelled absolutely amazing and that's why I picked it up. And then the other fragrance that I picked up on the same day, it's actually another fragrance from BDK Parfums. It's this one right here. I think you pronounce it uh, Gris Charnel, Gris Charnel. I don't know, I don't speak French, I'm sorry. But this is another one from the house that blew me away. And I actually did try five fragrances from BDK Parfums. They were all really good. A couple of the other ones actually smelled really similar to some fragrances that I already owned. So I didn't go ahead and get them, at least at the time. This one and then the Tabac Rose, the other fragrance, definitely separated themselves. I couldn't really think of anything that had smelled like them. They're pretty unique and that's why I went ahead and bought them. So this to me was a really hard fragrance to kind of think, of. I couldn't really pick out these notes very well. It was blended so well. Looking at the note breakdown, it has cardamom, fig, there's black tea, iris, sandalwood, tonka bean, among some other notes. It honestly had this kind of gentlemanly, older style, sophisticated smell. It doesn't smell like a fougere or a barbershop fragrance or any kind of like citrus aromatic. So I'm not saying it's in that style, but the way these notes work together for some reason gave me this kind of old school, sophisticated smell, but modernized. Like this thing smells amazing, absolutely amazing. I think of these two, this is the one that I liked better if I remember correctly. So solid fragrance. I can't wait till I can actually crack these open and start smelling them. But again, that was my last pickup. That was BDK Parfums, Gris Charnel. Well, there you guys go. That was my weekly fragrance haul episode four. Also, be sure to let me know down in the comments which fragrances you guys have picked up recently. I'd really love to hear about that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, or if you found it entertaining, maybe got something out of it, I would really appreciate dropping a like just to show your support. And that way more people can see my videos on YouTube. Additionally, if you wanna write a comment, maybe just let me know your thoughts as well as some new video ideas or topics, that would be great too. And since you're down there doing all that stuff, if you've not already, if you could hit the subscribe button and then the bell notification, that would be amazing. That way you stay up to date on new videos whenever they get released going forward. But with all that out of the way, that's all I really have for you guys today. So I hope you have a good one, stay healthy, stay wealthy, and smell great.